Hi everyone. I did a review on this Max Speeding Rods MXR 3500 watt suitcase generator on my channel a few weeks ago. And Max Speeding Rods got in contact with me and saw the review and said they liked it and asked me if I would like to review this model here, which is the uh, MXR 4500i. And I said, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that. And I'm going to put them to the test as well. So let's have a closer look at this one. We'll fill it up with oil because it doesn't come filled with oil. We'll have a look around it and then we'll run them both up and let's see what they can do. Right, so looking at them, this one's obviously physically a lot bigger and it's the cradle type where you've got these two sort of handles there, which is a nice feature and they're not too heavy as well. Whereas this one is what you call a suitcase style generator. And looking at the specifications for both, the main thing to notice is that the running watts on the new one is 3,200 watts. Uh, the running watts on the suitcase generator is 3,000 watts, so there's a 200 watt increase in that. And the peak watts on this one is 3,500 watts, and the peak watts on this one is 3,300 watts. The engine size on the smaller one is 145 cc's, and this one has a larger engine in this one it's 223 cc so it's quite a bit bigger this one so we're hoping obviously that it can handle more of a, a load let's go around the front of it as you can see there you've got very nice controls on it a nice easy to read front panel there you've got obviously got the main engine on and off switch that's how you turn it on and off so number three is the output ready light so when that comes on the output's ready that one there is an overload lighting and indicates that the generator is being overloaded and this one is an oil low level light so you've got that there so each socket has got its own independent breaker as you can see like that and that's a, a reset in the middle there you do have also a DC breaker for your DC outputs. And uh, there you obviously have a 12 volt DC output there. This meter here is your VTF data center. This displays cumulative runtime, single runtime, output voltage, and also frequency. You just pick the mode button to flick between the two of them as well. And you've also got an earth point there where you can take a cable off to an earth rod and stick a, a copper bar or something in the ground so that gives you a grounding or an earth. The oil in this one is the same as the other one, it's 10W30 and this takes 0.6 litres which these don't come supplied with so you have to take the dipstick out which is there, it's got a reading on there, there is a, a nominal amount of oil in there. And uh, someone did say that the oil this may come with could be uh, running in oil, which you should drain out. It doesn't refer to that at all in the manual. It just says top up with 10W30 oil. And just to help you with that, they do supply this little funnel as well. So you can stick in there and actually fill your oil up to there. So they don't supply you with oil, as I said, but um, I've got some of that. So I'll be putting some of that in very, very shortly. The fuel tank sits on top and it's got the addition of a float indicator there it's on empty at the moment and there's a full side there so obviously the float will come up and lift up and uh, there again is where you put your fuel in there is a red indicator there just that's your full line and it's got a strainer in there as well this is a, a normally vented cap so when you screw this one down it's uh switched on whereas this one the vent you can actually shut off on that one in case of transit when you're moving about so that's just to show you the difference between that cap and that cap coming around to this side here that's where you start it with that's your pull cord your fuel tap which is just located there is in the off position at the moment and the on position is when it is vertical so facing up towards the tank that the bar will be the on position and your choke lever here you can probably see it there it's in the off position that side and for starting the choke goes over that way so that's all the controls on it just to make note that the uh, fuel tank capacity is 7.5 liters and the recommended fuel is e10 in this spin it over and it tells you then the engine is shipped without engine oil fill it with sae 10w30 before starting and it takes 600 milliliters as i've already stated and that's how you measure the fill level you don't screw the cap right the way in you just sit it on the surface and you're looking for it to be near enough at the top of the uh, cross hatchings there on the dipstick so that's all we need to know let's get some oil in it we'll get it started up and then we'll put some load on it and see how it performs Right, 
so I've just put in 550 millilitres because I don't know how much uh, oil was actually in there so I don't want to overfill it so let's have a little measure just to see where we're at again don't screw it in I'm gonna put the paper underneath that and that is right in the middle of our dipstick can you see that so I'm gonna probably leave it there and we'll run it first and then we'll check it again afterwards so we know we've got enough oil in the engine that's our first part over with make sure you wipe up as well folks because just below that you've got the rubber engine mounts and if you get oil on the uh, rubber engine mounts they can sort of go spongy and squidgy after a while so we don't want to allow that to happen so just wipe any drippage off right okay so i've got some uh, e10 fuel here and uh let's just put some in let's have a go try not spill any right okay so that's the e10 fuel in i haven't gone too mad it does tell you in the manual to make sure that everything is uh you haven't got any load connected to it so we haven't got any load connected to it so it's our first time of starting it i'm going to turn the fuel on there the choke lever is now going that way to the on position as soon as the engine starts up obviously we can turn the choke off right so i'm going to go for the first pull just going to ensure that the engine switch is in the on position which i've just done there and uh, obviously the carb's got to fill up first, so it might not start first pull. Just get the uh, carburetor primed. Switch it on, yep. Let's try to choke off. Right, that's interesting. Um, with, the, with the choke in that position off, it, it's like the choke's running on. Do it in that position. That's the choke running off. Right, to me, in that position, the choke's in the off position. I'm just going to check that. If I take out the air filter, just undo this screw here. I just want to check that because I had quite a bit of trouble starting that. So by taking the air filter cover out and the air filter out, I can, and that little gauze there. Now, there you go. That sticker is actually the wrong way around, folks. I couldn't start it with the choke in that position, saying that the choke was on because the choke was actually off. You can see the butterfly there is actually open. So I was pulling it without choking it because you should have the choke on to start the engine. Up there, as you can see, the lever's pointing that way that the choke is on. So as soon as I flick the lever to that position where the choke should be off, as you can see, the lever comes across and actually puts the choke on. That's why I couldn't start it. So unless you knew that, that label is actually the wrong way around. So that needs to come off of there and really be like that. But it's upside down then. There you go, should be there. But I know that that way now is on, as it shows there. But put the lever that way, and that's that way is off. So I will get that remade. I'll make one of them labels up myself. But uh, yeah, just something where it wouldn't start, folks. Just something to be aware of. Right, okay, so let's put that switch back on. 
and it, it has run for a little bit so it might start with no choke on so i know the choke is off at the moment now it still needs to choke because it's still cold so put the choke on start straight away then Right, okay then, so it obviously powers small equipment like that, for example. This one only has the, the one speed, whereas the suitcase generator has a, an economy loading if you're using smaller stuff. But obviously, you know, if you're using something which is this sort of size, obviously you want it for bigger stuff. So I'm going to wheel out a couple of bits of bigger equipment now, and let's see if this thing can handle them. First of all, a 50 litre air compressor. Okay then, so this is my 50 litre air master compressor it's got a two horsepower engine on it electric motor let's start the generator up first of all it might get a bit noisy folks but um stick with me i've turned the switch on come out away merlin so it really wants choke to start from cold folks and then take the choke off. right okay Well, that powered that absolutely no problem whatsoever, folks. That's got full pressure tank now in that compressor. And just to show you, I'll just open that little valve the other side. Just to... There we go. That's put over 100 and... Put about 120 pounds in there, in that tank, no problem whatsoever. So as far as loading that's concerned, that's not a problem. So one other thing I want to do on this one is just to measure the decibels on it, just so that you get some sort of idea what it is. My normal speech at the moment is probably about 60 to 80 decibels, as you can see there while I'm talking. If I just be quiet for a minute. Just background noise is about 45 to 50. So let's start this up. So if I turn it on again from, uh, it's been about 10 minutes now. Before the 10 minutes mark, you had to put the choke on all the time, so. There you go. That's fine. So if you start it from cold, you're gonna need the choke. Maybe within the first five minutes, you're gonna need the choke. And after about 10 minutes, you don't need the choke on, so it starts once it's really nice and warm, so that's fine. So with this generator, you'll also get a cover. That is a cover just to put over the whole of the generator. They give you two free 13 amp plugs. They also give you a screwdriver, which is reversible, with a cross head and a flat head on there like that. You'll get a spark plug spanner and uh, the uh, lever to go through it. The spark plug, by the way, is mounted just in there. And they'll also provide you with this little 12 volt USB output. So you can literally just open your 12 volt socket there and uh, poke these in. There we go. And that gives you two USB output supplies as well. So there you go. That term um, compressor we just run there, as I said to you, is a two horsepower 
compressor, 50 litre. It ran that up no problem whatsoever. There was no load, really bad load on the engine whatsoever. Didn't notice a change in exhaust pitch to show that it was struggling at all. Let's go and get a welder out now and let's see if it will power my welder, which is a 135 amp Clark MIG welder. Okay then, this is my Clark TE 135 turbo. <laughs> uh, this is a MIG welder. I've got a Hobby World gas bottle on it, but um, it does have a 13 amp plug on it, which I use in the main normal mains electricity. Well, let's start the generator first. We'll plug this in and we'll try and do a little bit of welding. I'm going to keep the settings first of all on the minimum settings. That's what I normally use when I'm doing car bodywork panels or stuff like that, which is normally one mil metal. I've got a sheet of uh, two mil metal here, so we'll try that as well. So let me start this generator back up again. Choke is on and see how we go. that off for a minute that was on the low settings now normally when you're doing car bodywork you you would basically use the low settings I never use the high settings but uh, let's just show you that there we go and if we show you the back of it we've got penetration right through to the back there as well I think you see that or not and also underneath so on the low settings, that is absolutely no problem whatsoever welding that. Now what I will do, I'll just try and knock it up to its maximum settings now and let's just see what happens then. We are expecting it to kick a little bit because it has to, the governor's got to re-regulate. So let's just uh, hold that on there like that and we'll try and weld this bit on there on the high settings. I don't know whether it's going to blow through or not folks, we'll have to just take that as it comes. Right, so, let's take that off. On its full maximum settings, it obviously didn't want to know, but um, anything for car bodywork repairs and stuff like that, 
In fact, it was so powerful, it blew straight through that one mil, uh, that one mil gauge metal there, and we got full penetration on the uh, two mil there. So uh, yeah, it didn't quite like it. So ideally, you want to be doing sort of small stuff. If you're, if, if you're going to do small stuff like car repairs and stuff like that on bodywork and stuff like that. Uh, it should be fine, it'll power that okay, but it did trip out on maximum power on my TE135. So it just gives you an indication of what you're after if you're gonna do welding and stuff like that. Ideal for the mobile world of doing uh, car body repairs, in it, I would imagine, but um, if you're doing big quarter inch plate stuff and all that, yeah, perhaps you wanna look for an even bigger generator, which I'm sure Max Speeding will do them as well. Anyway, that's that. I hope that was of some interest to you. I was gonna test it on the small one, but um, the results are going to be very similar. I've seen the, the small one run um, uh, a welder and it did struggle a little bit on the low settings. So if you're going to do welding, this would be the one to go for. And as I say, you'll be fine up to uh, doing car body work. One mil easily uh, solve car body work repairs. Well, there you go. I hope you found this a little bit interesting and uh, it gives you some sort of indication on what these generators are capable of. If, so if you want to see the other review, I'll leave a link in the description below and also I'll leave a link for these two generators in the description below as well. I think Max Speedy Rods will probably give us a discount on that, I'm not too sure. So anyway, do have a look at it, do check the links below, and I uh, hope this was of some interest to you, and we'll see you in the next video, and until then, bye for now.